Hello everybody, my name is Jeffrey Sendejas and myself, Brad, and Abby had the opportunity to spend time with Jay and Marie over at Sunset in Jenison. The objectives of today are as follows. We want to talk about the introduction, the health history, the occupational engagement, the MOCA, fall prevention checklist, the assessments, summary, and lastly, our resources. Jay and Marie were a fantastic couple that we had the opportunity to spend time with. They were full of laughter, joy, and great memories and stories. Jay is a 94-year-old male, and Marie is a 95-year-old female. They're both residents of the assisted living and have been for four years. Previously, they were part of the independent living for 10 years. Jay and Marie have been happily married for 71 years. They have had two children, six grandchildren, and 14 great-grandchildren. Next, we will show a video of Jay telling us a story during the occupational profile. Work. Me? Yeah. Well, I was, well, I started, uh, started in office as an individual and ended up the office manager. Oh, very nice. Moved up then. Moved up in your business to manager. Well, I worked for uh, one gentleman who a terrific man. Yeah. He, he was the guy who interviewed me for, for the basic, basic uh, in, uh, invoice or in, uh, basic job. Mm -hmm. really. He showed me a set of booking books. He said, Do you understand? It was, you know, he's not scored more lunch. Oh, so, very nice. That, and that's why it was. A couple of mm -hmm. different times I was going to leave, and I said, John, I got a Good job. He said, you got a better job here. <laughs> Jay's health history consists of two falls, which resulted in fractures of both his left and right lower extremity. This previous history of falls has made Jay weary of much functional mobility due to the potential of another fall. Jay also wears hearing aids due to declined auditory functioning. Although Jay stated that these helped with his hearing, we found ourselves repeating statements for Jay during our home assessment with him. When Jay does engage in functional mobility, he utilizes a four-wheeled walker within his apartment. When he goes into the hallway and to other areas of the facility, he requires somebody to push him in a wheelchair. Jay also spoke about a past history of melanoma on his right upper extremity, which no longer affects him. Jay spoke spoke that he took many medications but was unsure of their specific uses. He mentioned that he thought some were for hypertension and that others could be multivitamins. During future OT sessions with Jay, it may be worthwhile to investigate the medications he is taking and their impact on him. Jay's past occupations consists of going to trade school for a couple of years. Following this, he worked for Ford for 42 years. Jay is a father to many children and grandchildren and is still married to his beautiful wife Marie. Both him and his wife Marie enjoyed golf as a leisure activity in the past but no longer pursue it. Jay was very proud to speak about serving in World War II and even has a license plate on his four-wheeled walker signifying that he served in the war. Currently, both Jay and Marie enjoy reading and watching sports together, specifically the Detroit Tigers and U University of Michigan football. They enjoy participating in activities in the common room, but feel as though they cannot participate as much due to physical limitations. Jay is responsible for all BADLs and requires some level of assistance for most, except for eating and grooming, which he can do independently. Jay stated that he would like to walk better in his room and in the hallway, that he would like to participate in more games in the courtyard, and that he would like education in regard to fall prevention. Again, Jay has a past history of falls, and so this is a primary concern. Following the occupational profile, Jay's range of motion and then strength were tested. Jay's entire right upper extremity was found to be within functional limits for all tested motions. Jay's left upper extremity, which is his dominant hand, was also found to be within functional limits for all tested motions. 
Jay's right upper extremity was tested first for strength. Manual muscle tests revealed good measures of strength throughout his entire right upper extremity. Jay's left upper extremity, again his dominant side, was tested next and yielded similar results as his right side. Jay was proud of it of his ability to maintain his upper body physical characteristics throughout his life. This will definitely be a strength of his as it will make it easier on him when performing transfers and performing activities that may require him to utilize his arms. We decided to utilize the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, or MOCA for short, during Jay's assessment. As the name implies, the MOCA is a cognitive assessment with subcategories of visual spatial executive, naming, memory, attention, language, abstraction, delayed recall, and orientation. We chose to utilize this assessment as Jay had some confusion during our OT profile. He had difficulty remembering some of his children and grandchildren and could not answer some of the questions we asked. Marie, his wife, had to help him during his responses. After this, the assessors became concerned of possible cognitive impairment. Previous research has shown that the MOCA is highly sensitive and specific for detecting mild cognitive impairments and is why the researchers decide, decided to utilize this assessment tool. Jay scored a 17 out of 30 on the MOCA assessment. This score falls below the threshold for normal cognitive processing, which would be a score of 26 or higher. This indicates the potential for cognitive de decline in Jay. Specific areas Jay had difficulty with were executive functioning, delete, delayed read call, and language. We also decided to utilize the fall prevention checklist during Jay's assessment. The Fall Prevention Checklist is a yes or no 10 item questionnaire with items that ask about incontinence, dizziness, and other problem areas that could cause an individual to have a fall. This assessment was chosen because of Jay's past history of falls and his current difficulties with ambulating within his apartment. The assessors were concerned about Jay's future with having a fall in which the Fall Prevention Checklist can identify problem areas and give recommendations on how to avoid a fall based on a yes response. Jay answered yes to 5 out of 10 questions. Jay answered yes to Have you fallen before or been injured because of a fall? Do you feel weaker than you used to or have less strength in your arms and legs? Have you stopped doing daily activities or avoided exercise because you're afraid of falling? Has your eyesight diminished or do you have trouble seeing depth or seeing at night? And have you experienced hearing loss? Appropriate recommendations for Jay based on these yes responses include consider using a personal emergency response service such as Lifeline to help you if you fall, perform regular body weight exercises while seated, start slowly, slowly to build your confidence in exercise and daily activities, consider first chair exercises and then progress to standing exercises if appropriate. If Jay is afraid of exercising alone, consider doing it with a staff member, Marie, or joining a group class. Finally, Jay should place night lights throughout his apartment and place bright colored tape over surfaces that may cause him to trip. We use the Home Safety Self-Assessment Tool, the HSSAT, which is in the third volume. It was created by the Occupational Therapy Geriatric Group at the University of Buffalo. The tool is used to disseminate information regarding fall risks and to assess for fall risks in the older adult's home. Horowitz and colleagues found the HSSAT to be a valuable tool for assisting older adults with self-identifying fall hazards and thereby increasing their ability to age in place. The HSSAT was used to evaluate for home hazards in the following areas in the entrance to the front door, the foyer, the living room, the kitchen, the bedroom, and the bathroom in Jay and Marie's apartment. Only two areas, problem areas, were identified 
throughout the entire apartment, and those were a lack of railings at the entrance to the home and the presence of an unstable chair in the living room. Based on these findings, um, we weren't too concerned about the lack of railing at the entrance to the home because there are no steps to enter the home and additionally there was a locked wheelchair next to the front door that could be used as a balance check if needed otherwise both of them always use a four-wheeled walker when walking which would provide support. Um, the second finding was the unstable chair which is a roller desk chair in their living room and we thought that this could be easily replaced with a stable non-roller desk chair um, and that would prevent the chair from rolling out from underneath the person using it. So a chair like this is available at Staples for $65.79. So our assessments of Jay and Marie. Uh, they were very active throughout their entire lives and they're very healthy right now. Um, and we think that's due in large part to how active they were through their whole lives. They were very involved with their children, with work, with social activities, and that contributed greatly to their health, in our opinion. Only four years ago did they move into the assisted living when they started to experience general health decline. And so in those four years, they have experienced a steady decline in health, including loss of strength and balance for mobility. They both have significant hearing loss. Jay has fractured two um, bones in his legs with, and has experienced delayed healing along with that. And both have experienced increased confusion. So Jay's leg fractures in recent years have affected his mobility and each fracture was the result of a fall. So we found that Jay was very hesitant to leave the room and both Jay and Marie are experiencing more and more social isolation as they stay in their room and spend more and more time reading because Jay has a fear of getting out of the room and fear of falling due to his past experience with them. And we know that this is very common. Painter at all discussed the connection between community living older adults with um, falling and then fear of falling and anxiety. And so we found this to be true for Jay. Our assessment of the Jay and Marie as a whole, some strengths we found were their upper extremity range of motion and strength. Specifically in Jay, he's very proud of how strong he is in his upper extremity, upper extremities, which is really great. They live in a safe and supporting living environment at sunset. They knew when to move from the independent living into the assisted living, which was really great. And then they use the resources available at sunset when necessary, so they both have aides come in when they need help with ADLs. They have aides come in when they need help ambulating through the hallways or even being pushed in a wheelchair. And finally, they are very motivated. They would like to get out and be more active in social activities at sunset um, in order to spend less time in their room reading. And so that motivation will hopefully um, cause them to leave the room more and more. Some weaknesses we found were the risk factors for falls identified through the assessments we performed. The cognitive decline that we noticed um, just in talking with them and through the MOCA, we noticed quite a bit of memory loss and confusion. And then finally, their decreased functional mobility. They're both relying on walkers and less likely to leave the room due to fear of falling. Some recommendations based on our findings, we thought some seated lower extremity exercises would be really helpful for both of them in order to maintain the strength that they do have in their lower extremities in order to continue um, ambulating for as long as possible. We also recommended some visual cues for memory. Both, as we said, are experiencing memory loss and so visual cues around the apartment would greatly help with some of the daily tasks and activities they do in their room. And then finally, the fall prevention checklist recommendations that Brad stated earlier. So in summary, Jay and Marie would benefit from OT services in their apartment. An OT would be able to help implement recommendations from the fall prevention checklist. And then furthermore, an OT could perform um, therapy sessions to target cognitive deficits identified by the MOCA, including delayed recall, executive functioning, and language. We really enjoyed our time with Jane Marie and we hope you've enjoyed hearing about it. These are our references.